Welcome to my strategy series. In these videos, we look at quick ways to analyze the markets. In this video, we're going to be talking about swing trades. Okay, now we're on to swing trades. So I think it's very clear at this point that everything starts as a scalp trade. You cannot have anything past scalp trades until you master the scalp trade. Now, I don't like to say it's kind of common sense because that's not an accurate depiction here. It's what I call total sense. It's common sense once you know it, but that's not so common because unless you're told it, it kind of is something that you wouldn't really ever think about. Therefore, I like the term, it's total sense. It makes total sense. It's common sense once you know it. So this makes total sense as to why we can never enter a trade right off the bat as a swing trade. So if you ever meet someone that says, I'm just a swing trader, I think they're missing a piece. If you ever meet somebody who's saying, I'm an investor, well, now we're swinging with a baseball bat and a blindfold on. So I think you get the picture when you're day trading or a trader or any type of investor, anybody who has any type of stake in these markets of any type, even if it's just as an investor. If you were to master how to scalp trade first, it would open the doors to say, hey, this is a great scalp trade and it's starting to meet the criteria of what could turn into a swing trade. And then one in every 10 swing trades, it would fall under that same umbrella where you could say, hey, this swing trade is going great. It's ticking all the boxes. I can leave this thing to continue to go. Now we're watching a scalp trade that we defined earlier. and with the same understanding that, hey, not everything is going to turn into a swing trade. If you were to leave this trade, you would probably lose money a lot of the time by just saying, let's see where it goes. And then you get people who have perfect entries on trades. They never have a criteria to say, well, you know, what could actually turn this into a swing trade? And they kind of just constantly lose money. So I'm going to talk about some of the criteria that you can look for going forward in a trade to say, hey, this is a scalp trade we're in already. What could turn this into a swing trade? So the first thing I would do here is I would say, okay, we got the perfect entry on a trade. Now we need to have some kind of heads up thinking to say, what would this need to do in order to break this move up and keep moving up and not just be a scalp trade that we have to exit? Well, if you hard close under this, I think it's pretty obvious that you're going to be dumping this move. So you've got about 30 seconds left in this trade before you're going to start moving down. Now you've got a few things going on here. Technically, you're laddering right now. So you're holding the move. You had this point, which created the hold level here, which gave you your hold level here, which is what you hit and you're laddering to here. So you've kind of got this architecture in the moment building. Hold, uh, ladder point, ladder point, ladder point created off of hold, ladder here, ladder there. So you're kind of actually laddering in the move now. So you want to create a hold level that you can break over and something that you don't hard close underneath. So if this candle closed a little bit lower, uh, well, I think it would be safe to say that this thing was moving down and it's going to fail its move. However, right now it's trying to hold its move to turn into a swing trade and be out of this criteria of a scalp trade by leaving this trend. So if we can continue to ladder here and maybe this can turn into a hold level, well, we can now start to develop criteria that will allow us to be in this trade. So we really have to get up and over this thing and create some accumulation over top of this. So it can kind of be a shield in the future if you want to think of it that way. If we have a hold level that's holding us there it can be something that protects our trade. So you can see it's not actually happening. So you've got to kind of exit your trade here and just say like, okay, well, it didn't work out onto the next trade. And you're not really going to have a lot of opportunities to create these things. So you could wait till the end of the one minute here. If you were a futures trader, you'd be out of this now. If you're a margin or spot, you could be in this trade still and say, well, you know, we're still laddering off this. So you know, technically we've hit this hold level now. And uh, what's the criteria going forward? You have to develop a hold level here while still holding this ladder point. So now you've developed your new criteria to see if this scalp can continue to be a scalp. And sometimes you're just going to get an opportunity where it moves up a little bit like this and you have to get out of the trade because it keeps holding it. And a scalp is, is left as a scalp. You make a little bit of money on it and you're on to the next one. If it's not working out, you just move on to the next one. Right now, we've hit kind of our one of our last ladder points in the move. We've now hit this hold level. We can create this as a hold and that's it. So now you've got your criteria right there. But again, I don't really think this is moving up. I think it's more of kind of collapsing down and, and falling over. If you're asking me my opinion in the moment, this doesn't really look like it's going to hold its move. Rather, maybe it's going to go to a lower part of the move. It, unless this hold is moving, develops this as a hold level, you can't turn this into a swing trade. And then you're going to move up in time frames and say that same thing. Now, if this stabilizes for long enough, maybe you have a three minute hold level that develops here. In about four seconds, you're going to have something that's starting to develop. So, on a higher time frame, you may be able to create your next three minute hold level. And if you remember, this had created a trail of different trades on the three minute hold levels from all the way back here, right? If you go back into this trade, you can see 
you have a three minute hold level right here that created the next hold level in the move, which is right here. That created the next hold level in the move, which is right here, which is now creating the next hold level in the move. So if in the next three minutes you close above this, then you'd start building more and more criteria that could support this move up. But it's always our job as day traders. When we get into these positions as scalp trades, before we decide if they're going to turn into anything else, where we're going to hold this or whether we're going to take quick profits and be in it. Sometimes we're in a trade for 30 seconds because that's all the profit dictates and we want to protect our accounts. Sometimes we're in trades for longer periods of time, but we always have to work forward in this criteria and say, hey, what time is it right now? 3.45. Uh-oh, I think we just developed a 15-minute level. So if we were in this scalp trade and over the next 15 minutes, we start to stabilize and move above this level, well, that would be a great indication that you've developed a higher time frame level to hold up the move so that when you go over this, right, you come here, you go over top of this level, it's the perfect move to support you in the future. Because if it loses this on this side and goes down, well, you can still get out in profits from these positions down here, right? And if it, on the alternative, hits this and moves up, well, now you've got the candidation for a swing trade. You've started to develop larger levels and then you can just keep going up. Now you can go to the hourly and say, whoa, look at this. We could actually create an hourly hold level if we just get over top of this. So let's delete all this other stuff, see where that hourly level is, because this will be a big mark going forward in the future. Or if you hold around this price for the next, I don't know, 15 minutes and create a new hourly candle, then maybe this would be the hold level that could hold you up. So this is the type of analysis that you have to do when you are looking at, hey, I'm in a scalp trade. Can this turn into a swing trade? Does it have the supporting criteria and the strong levels? The three minute, can we, can we take that three minute and can it hold this price? And is it going to be a five minute soon? What about that 15 minute candle? Is it 3.15 in the afternoon right now and it's going to take 45 minutes for an hourly candle to create? Or is it 3.55 and in five minutes, if we kind of hold this price, hey, we've got an hourly hold level there and it, we just need to like move 20 or $30 to get above it. Man, we're in the clear. This is looking more and more and more like instead of being a scalp trade, I should stay in this longer and turn it into a swing trade. So this is kind of the criteria that you're looking at creating these trades. And if you go back and look at the hourly, um, yeah, we've got 12 minutes to hold this point so that we can create a hold level here or 12 minutes to simply get over top of this one. And if we get over top of this one, hmm, guess what? You're going to be in pretty good shape to be in a swing trade. See you on the next video, which is all about position trading.